estamos observando cómo el presidente Biden está insertando vientos de cambio en toda la acción pública, en la acción económica, fiscal y, por supuesto, en la social. We are seeing absurd gas prices and a gas shortage. Unemployment's rising as benefits keep flowing. Crime is back and bloodier than ever. We're witnessing shootings and murders like never before. Fact is, we're learning a harsh lesson here. That progress and stability and success is just one liberal away from disaster. Just one liberal away. Think about that. Everything great about America can be unraveled by one leftist with some power and a vendetta against America. And we have an administration crawling with them. También en esta materia observarán cómo el presidente Biden está diciendo que quiere legislar en el sentido que hoy lo hace el gobierno de España. Now take New York. Rudy Giuliani took a city ripe with rampant crime and hopelessness and turned it into the number one global tourist attraction. And then Bloomberg inherited it and didn't screw it up totally. But then this ghoul came along. He's like a giant lumbering Frankenstein made up of parts from lesser idiots. And it took only one card-carrying anti-American commie to drag the city back down to its worst. But it's not just NYC, it's every city run by Dems. And now it's America. Y de esta manera, eh, España se convierte en la vanguardia de la legislación internacional en esta materia. Whether or not you like the policy, it's been an extraordinary first 100 days. To try to bring down the temperature in an overheated Washington, uh, inflamed by his predecessor, Donald Trump, uh, he's trying to reach out in a bipartisan fashion. President Biden delivers his first address to Congress, laying out a bold plan to rebuild the country. The president of the United States offering a bold new plan. Big, bold, huge progressive ideas. Big and bold, really bold, sweeping legislation. Big, bold, ambitious plans. We've been talking uh, over these last few moments about how bold these plans. Estamos a la vanguardia. Y por primera vez el mundo está mirando, créanme, eh, a España respecto de la regulación que hemos propiciado. Y creo que deberíamos congratular a Joe Biden en sus primeros 100 días y en lo que ha hecho. Pero también nosotros en la media tenemos que parar de presentar esto como si hubieran dos equipos partners en la política que tenemos que hablar con. We don't. Y nosotras no somos gentes de ruido. Somos gentes que trabajamos por el bien común. Now compare the Fawn Fest for Biden to what they did to Donald Trump. Why have the first 100 days been so chaotic? The first 100 days of disaster. It seems like uh, there is a lot of failure domestically. The president has no real milestone legislative achievement, no real legislative achievement at all. He's at record low approval ratings. Ahora los algoritmos van a ponerse eh, por primera vez en nuestro país al servicio de la mayoría social. Y creo que esto define a un gobierno que es progresista. Están al, a favor de la gente, de los que más eh, lo necesitan. One thing that I will say is that I do think that um, The Biden administration and President Biden has definitely exceeded expectations that progressives had. Look, I, I think that the left has decided that they're going to try to push all the regular Americans uh, into a corner where they either have to fight, in which case they'll be attacked by the news media, or they have to just cave and, and hide. I, I couldn't imagine any administration which had been this deliberately anti-American uh, and this deliberately committed to infuriating the majority of the American people. Literally, in over 200 years of history, I can't think of a single administration that has been this radical uh, and, and this hostile. Well, you know, for any president to denigrate his own country And then, like, for example, the Chinese in Alaska coming in and basically trashing us, using the words that Biden trashes us with. It's almost like Biden is lined up with China against the American people. You know, I'm, I'm surprised that Saturday Night Live hasn't done a skit where there are a group of Chinese propaganda workers who are afraid that they're going to lose their jobs because Xi Jinping is going to close them down because uh, Biden and Harris and Kerry and others are doing such a marvelous job, uh, why would you get in their way? This is the most anti-American administration in history. ¿Tú te acuerdas del programa Caiga Quien Caiga? 
Cuando claro, perseguían pues, a políticos de derecha, a la peluquería, va no sé qué, y todo el mundo se reía. ¡Ah, qué vergonzosos los políticos de la derecha! ¡Qué malos son! Porque cuando lo hacemos nosotros contra los de la izquierda somos unos acosadores, somos unos buleros, somos unas personas insensatas, un cáncer para la democracia, porque perseguimos a la gente en su tiempo libre? Porque son políticos que, aunque estén en su tiempo libre, están haciendo todo lo contrario a lo que nos exigen a nosotros hacer desde las instituciones. Pero, pero ¿qué, qué, ¿qué demagogia estamos cometiendo nosotros ahí, David? Estamos mostrando la verdadera cara de una panda de paniaguados políticos que viven de, de nosotros sin cumplir sus propias normas. O sea, yo es que no, no veo nada éticamente reprochable en eso. Y a mí lo que más me frustra Venga. es tener pruebas fehacientes, pero no judicialmente utilizables, de gente que sé que ha robado y que ha robado puertas de extorsionadores, de mafiosos. Gente que tú dices, es tan claro, tan claro que han robado y no lo podemos llevar a prisión. La definición absoluta de impunidad. LeBron, hey, you got to me again. Listen, I'm out here at this disturbance call and there's a guy trying to stab another guy with a knife. What do you think I should do? Why does that matter? Okay, uh, well, they're both black. One guy's trying to stab another guy with a knife. The deadly force is completely justified. Uh-huh. I see. So you don't care if a black person kills another black person, but you do care if a white cop kills a black person, even if he's doing it to save the life of another black person? I mean, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but then again, you are really good at basketball, so I guess I'll take your word for it. All right. Yep. Okay. All right. Thanks, LeBron. Michael Jordan's the GOAT. What? Nothing. I gotta go. Sorry, guys. You're on your own. Good luck. No nos valen las soluciones de antaño. No nos vale conformarnos con lo hecho. No nos vale sino avanzar. Seguir dialogando con la esperanza. So I was driving home from base. strawberry one um and this girl comes up to me um i see her in the corner of my eye like staring at me i think she's just gonna say something i don't know um and out of nowhere she just says i hope you get shot and i'm just sitting there like what did you just say to me and she was like i hope you get shot and i'm like why why would you say that to me why would you say that to anybody And she says, you're what's wrong with this world. And then she walks away and starts mumbling something about white privilege. I'm blown away. Las personas de este país, con su gobierno al frente, hemos hecho un pacto con la esperanza. After the speech, an amazing thing happened after the speech. Every black Republican senator got together to let the American people know the Republican Party isn't racist. Today... Kids are being taught that the color of their skin defines them again. And if they look a certain way, they're an oppressor. From colleges to corporations to our culture, people are making money and gaining power by pretending we haven't made any progress at all. By doubling down on the divisions, we've worked so hard to heal. You know this stuff is wrong. Hear me clearly. America is not a racist country. And then Tim promptly returned to the sensory deprivation egg he calls home. Los jóvenes y las jóvenes de nuestro país tienen derecho a escribir su propia biografía y hacerlo con dignidad. Y además, tienen que ser ellas las que tengan el centro de la actuación política y pública. Son ellas y ellos los que tienen que exigirnos tener una biografía digna. Our Constitution opens with the words, as trite as it sounds, we the people. Well, it's time to remember that we the people are the government, you and I. Not some force in a distant capital, not some powerful force that we have no control over. It's us. It's we the people. Almost all the world's constitutions are documents in which governments tell the people what their privileges are. Our Constitution is a document in which we, the people, tell the government what it is allowed to do. We, the people, are free. This belief has been the underlying basis for everything I've tried to do these past eight years. But back in the 1960s, when I began, 
it seemed to me that we'd begun reversing the order of things. That through more and more rules and regulations and confiscatory taxes, the government was taking more of our money, more of our options, and more of our freedom. Ours was the first revolution in the history of mankind that truly reversed the course of government and with three little words, we the people. We the people tell the government what to do. It doesn't tell us. We the people are the driver. The government is the car. And we decide where it should go and by what route and how fast. En la ingente tarea que a todas y a todos como país nos implica desde ahora mismo. Joe Biden said, we the people is the government. No, Joe, you seriously misunderstand the Constitution. We the people is not the government. We are not a country of dictators in Washington running the people. We the people is the people, damn it, who are in charge of the government, whose freedom you're taking away, whose liberty you're stripping away. And it showed the arrogance of the hard left that they think that it was the he is the no. state, is what he said, and he's we the people. I mean, holy cow, that was radical. And, 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 and that's where, where today's Democrats are. Es una norma principal y que va a cambiar el, el signo de los tiempos. We have to realize that Fox News, and I know that this is CNN, but Fox News has completely radicalized so many Americans. If you look at Fox News and then you compare that to hate radio from Rwanda and what started that civil war, there's comparisons there. Like, so we have to know that a lot of our fellow Americans, fellow children of God, have been radicalized by a network of news that, as a former radical, I can tell you from watching Fox News, all. I can show you where their same radical stuff that I used to say. I used to have a TV show as a neo-Nazi. I used to know how to do the, they used the same stuff. Instead of saying where I would say Jews, they say big media. Like, I mean, it's just they swapped out a couple of words here and there. But it's still just radicalization. So that's where we have to look. It's Fox News. Por eso creo que en tiempos de, bueno, de distancia de las gentes, nosotras a las cosas importantes. Se criticó mucho a Irene Montero porque el otro día sí. eh, dijo niñes. Sí. Y, y, ¿Y qué pasa? Pues que, que la gente se ha vuelto en plan loca, en plan, de, ¿cómo dice niñes? Es niños, es niñas, pero no niñes. Y es como, bueno, eh, el lenguaje está, eh, está vivo, el lenguaje cambia y, y, y que, que se... Que se revisionen las cosas es bueno. O sea, quiero decir, si antes... O sea, porque nosotros normalmente, ni digo, nosotros usamos el masculino siempre. Y me da muchísima rabia porque aunque haya, una, aunque haya un chico en un grupo, siempre se usa el, el masculino. ¿Por qué no podemos eh, cambiar eso? Y utilizar un niño si hay una persona que no se identifica con, ni el, con el masculino ni con el femenino, ¿qué te cuesta a ti? O sea, bueno, yo no te digo que lo uses. Porque aquí cada uno que use lo que quiera, pero que lo critiques, o sea, perdona, o sea, es que encima esa gente que lo critica demuestra su pensamiento, o sea, arcaico, que es como, chico, evoluciona un poquito, ¿sabes? Que, que vamos, y luego, no es que la RAE, mira, la RAE no legisla, para empezar, y la RAE son, son 80 señores mayores que deciden, no, no es que decidan, pero que tienen que decir lo que está bien usado y lo que no, pues no, o sea, pues eh, aquí evolucionamos todos un poquito, que, bueno, no sé, es que realmente me da mucha rabia que se critique el todes o el, pues mira, que eh, tanto te molesta a ti, te molesta en serio esto, te molesta, o sea, y que se haga, eh, no sé, es que me da muchísima rabia, es algo que me, que me quema por dentro. En Avivir lo explicó un lingüista el, sí, el lo domingo, sé. lo escuchaste, lo escuché, ¿no? Claro. Lo, es, lo claro. explicó muy bien. Sí, 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 es que, ¿por qué, por qué te tiene que molestar eso? Porque es ideológico. This is what I'm talking about. We need this in the freaking United States of America. Why do we not have protests like this? It's going to be brutal and violent or whatever. We need this. Here. We have all this artificial body claiming power. If the power is denied to them, they take it by force. If this country, if this country doesn't give us what we want, then we will burn down this system and replace it. Well, um, hands down, Trump not only needs to not be in office in November, uh, but he should resign now. The media 
puts himself in the opposition to the society in general, at large. El malestar de que durante años ha existido durante décadas. Aguanta Venezuela, aguanta Maduro, aguanta la revolución. Nosotros estamos luchando por la dignidad, nosotros estamos luchando por mejor educación, por mejor, por mejores medicamentos, por mejores salarios. Eh, estamos luchando por todo, por todo, por todo. Creo que ante ese malestar social y esa distancia social, nosotras lo que hemos de hacer es generar sosiego y tranquilidad. Eso es lo que hacen los dirigentes y las dirigentes grandes, dar tranquilidad y sosiego a nuestras gentes cuando además nuestras gentes tienen miedo y están sufriendo. Donde más ha aumentado la contratación, pues presidencia del gobierno. Pedro Sánchez cuenta exactamente con 400. 422 asesores con un coste, ahí lo están viendo, de más de 15 millones de euros. El segundo departamento con más asesores, el Ministerio de Política Territorial y Función Pública, 162 asesores, al gasto 6,7 millones de euros. Y el nuevo vicepresidente del Gobierno y responsable de Derechos Sociales, por cierto, Pablo Iglesias, se estrena eh, con... Eh, 25 asesores exactamente que cuestan más de un millón de euros, Joaquín. Consejeros y consejeras. Porque ha habido noticias sobre que se van a subir los peajes, pero es que no solo se suben los peajes, se sube la luz, se sube el gas, se sube el gasoil, refrescos, autónomos, el IRPF, eh, eh, sociedades, patrimonio, matriculación, prima de seguro, subida al plástico, donaciones, tasa Google, recorte de grabaciones en planes y pensiones. Es decir, si tienes un plan de pensiones privado, se te acabó el descuento que te hacía Hacienda, vas a pagar todavía más. Y así una innumerable lista que no van a pagar obviamente solo los ricos, como tú sueles bromear mucho en tu canal y en tus redes sociales, sino todos nosotros, todos los curritos y todos los que estamos aquí pagando con nuestras nóminas eh, los caprichos de los políticos. Como tú bien has dicho, pues van a subir todo tipo de impuestos. Yo los partidos políticos que eso tienen un miedo absoluto a criticar a los funcionarios, pero ¿de qué estamos hablando? Si en este país tenemos una cantidad excesiva excesiva de funcionarios y cada vez que un partido político siquiera se replantea en sus órganos internos, en sus ejecutivas, hablar de esto que todo el mundo dice, sí, hay que reformar las instituciones de España, nunca se acometen porque tiene un coste electoral brutal. Hablando también pues del, del gasto que tenemos en estos momentos, que la deuda pública ha subido al 120%, que ahora mismo no hay dinero y es por esto el borrador del gobierno con estas propuestas para subirnos todos tipos de estamos impuestos, en... nos gastamos dinero como por ejemplo pues en el Ministerio de, de Igualdad 451 millones de euros, que es la mitad prácticamente de lo que nos cuesta el mantenimiento anual de las autovías, que son mil millones de euros. Eh, gastamos 13 millones de euros en la ley de memoria histórica, que sirve... 54 millones en Plus Ultra, 300 sí. millones para Media Pro, 1.200 millones de euros para el sector audiovisual de los fondos europeos. Sí, sí, sí. sí, sí. La, lista. la lista es grande y estamos aquí pagando todos los chiringuitos. Tenemos el gobierno eh, que más gasto público de la historia. Es que es un saqueo, es que es al final subirnos todo, prácticamente subirnos lo, todo mientras mantenemos el estado de bienestar. Sí, el estado de bienestar de esta, de esta clase política y sobre todo de, la, de los que están en el gobierno. Yo te Argentina paso por... y España dentro de 10 años se sigue gobernando Sánchez. Eso es Argentina. O mejor dicho, España es Argentina hace 10, 12 años. Eso es España hoy. Y España puede convertirse en Argentina ¿eh? perfectamente. Es absurdo. Es como cuando decía el, el hermano de Garzón que el Estado nunca quiebra porque siempre puede imprimir dinero. Pues nada, claro, puedes imprimir. Claro. ¿Quién iba a pensar que en Chile se iba a convocar y se iba a elegir una constituyente? Y así hizo el pueblo de Chile el pasado domingo y las fuerzas progresistas, las fuerzas de futuro, las fuerzas de izquierda obtuvieron una gran victoria contra la derecha pinochetista. Los compañeros de las fuerzas estudiantiles de Colombia, como la FEU, como Andes y como la CEU, como las principales fuerzas estudiantiles colombianas, expresaban allí cómo estaban siendo asesinados, perseguidos por el gobierno Iván Duque, asesinados en las calles, perseguidos en sus casas, allanando sus casas, por solo pedir el derecho gratuito a la educación, por solo pedir el derecho humano a la educación. Y hoy nos, solidariz nos solidarizamos con el pueblo colombiano, con las fuerzas estudiantiles colombianas, porque acá en Venezuela, para ellos, nosotros somos un ejemplo, presidente. You know, Nicole, um, as we've been watching the coverage of the protests across the country, um, we are seeing peaceful protesters, and then we're also seeing destruction, arson, 
looting. There is a bit of a, a raging debate, I think, in this country about how you express dissent and what is the appropriate or inappropriate way to express dissent. When we look at people rioting and looting, and no doubt some of the victims of the looting are going to be businesses that are African-American businesses. Um, how are we to interpret what we see there? Um, you know, the president called people thugs. What is it that we're looking at? Or, or, and maybe it's not just one thing. I think, one, we, we need to be really careful with our language. Um, yes, it is disturbing to see property being destroyed. It is disturbing to see uh, people taking property from stores. But these are things. And violence is when an agent of the state kneels on a man's neck until all of the life is leached out of his body. Destroying property which can be replaced is not violence. And to put those things, uh, to use the exact same language to describe those two things, I think really um, it's, not, it's not moral to do that. So, yes, I, I think any reasonable person excuse me, any reasonable person would say we shouldn't be destroying other people's property, but these are not reasonable times. So when we have people who say that uh, people should respect the law, uh, they're not respecting the law because the law is not respecting them. You can't say that, that regular citizens should play by all of the rules when agents of the state clearly are not. You can never be woke enough. That's the problem. It keeps going. It keeps right. going further and further and further down the line. And if you get that to the point where you capitulate, where you agree to all these demands, it will eventually get to straight white men are not allowed to talk. Right. Because it's your privilege to express yourself when other people of color have been silenced throughout history. It, it will be you're not allowed to go outside because so many people were imprisoned for so many years. I mean, I'm not joking. No, I, I know. I know. It, it really will get there. It's that crazy. You yeah. know, we just got to be nice to each other, man. And th there's a lot of people that are taking advantage of this weirdness in our culture, and then that becomes their thing. Their thing is calling people out for their privilege, calling people out for their position. You know, it's uh, fucking crazy times. Yeah. Nike is constantly political. Why? Cover. Congressional reports suspect Nike used forced labor in China. Religious minorities were ripped from their families, sterilized, sold to factories. Nike made shoes in those same areas. Congress tried to ban Nike's labor practices. Nike fought back with highly paid lobbyists. Rather than hiring Americans, Nike chose China. John Donahoe, Nike. Stop exploiting foreign labor. Serve your customers, not woke politicians. Ya sé lo que algunas personas van a decir. 